Hello, I'm Lucy, I'm a fine art beader and I paint with beads. And this is the third in my mini series about my creative process. And I'm creating a, a piece of uh, sewing machine embroidery on this Genome machine. And um, we've so far gone through making the design up, um, creating some new techniques on the machine. But today I'm going to show you exactly how to do them and the, and the final part of the process. I also had a breakthrough. I was having trouble getting the creases out the hobby craft um, cross stitch material. Um, so what I found was that cold water, cool water uh, in a mister, just to dampen the cloth and a hot iron has managed finally, finally to get the creases out. So um, um, we're ready to go. Now at this point in the pr creative process for me, um, I enter into a whole load of procrastination because of two things. Some of the excitement has gone. We've created a design um, and we've looked at different techniques and things that we can do. So all of that excitement is, is gone. But the second most important bit is that as I work on the piece itself and invest more and more time and add to it and add to it, um, it gets more and more tense as I get more and more concerned about making a mistake. And there's so many different things that can go wrong. But right now, um, there's, there's no excuse for it. I have to get on with it. And so let's have a go. So I have decided to um, use the maximum size of the text that's produced on this machine, which means I'll have to scale up, and I've done the scaling up already, um, and redrawn my sketch onto a new piece of paper here. And that means all I have to do is to measure where all the different pieces, all the different elements need to be going forwards on the actual canvas itself. So I've marked up each corner with some white thread and where the start of my text is going to be. So I'm going to program in the text. So I need mode five, Capital T is 30, put that into memory, uh, lowercase h, 44, memory, e, 41, memory, now I want a large space, 0, 0, memory, and so I continue to the end. So this is going to be ridiculously hard do and film at the same time but we'll give it a go. So I really want to try and see where that start is. I've got my words in there. It's never going to be 100% accurate. The important thing is to try and get it as straight as you can. So I'm just going to press start. Not using the presser foot at all. Just start and it's going to run through the text. Hopefully there are no spelling mistakes. Well, I'm certainly pleased that I started with the text because it took me two goes to get it absolutely straight. Absolutely straight. So that was a bit of good luck, really, <laughs> or good fortune, either way. Um, and what I'm doing is just I'm finishing off each and every thread of this. I'm just showing you I got sewing into the, the sewing there. I hope they can see that. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. And um, that's the way I'm going to be finishing everything off. So it is quite um, laborious, quite painstaking. What do you think about when you're doing your sewing? I'm normally thinking about my next um, next piece. What am I going to be doing next? Um, problems of the world. Philosophy. Science. And I'm using a beading needle here. I just want small, a small hole here. So it's very frustrating because this is not a beading thread. Um, nothing wrong with it. 
it's just I'm using a very fine needle. And I might give up and use a normal needle. Ah, there we go. Um, just helps to prevent too many big holes. Um, yeah. So this is the first stage here completed, which is quite a relief, really. Quite a relief. My next decision is which of the elements should I start with next? And I think that the people are going to be the, the more difficult. Um, those are the ones that are going to, those are the pieces that are going to go wrong, more, more likely. Um, so I shall measure up where they should lie and um, I set up the machine by dropping the feed dog so that I can move the material around at will because this is freehand and I'm going to attach um, the genome darning foot is a closed toe. Note that it's a closed toe because that means I can go forwards and backwards with the material at will without the, the thread coming out through, through an open toe of a darning foot. So it's closed foot. The way I'm going to do the people so I'm going to use just a straight, normal straight stitch, a fairly slow speed because I want to have some control. Um, and I'm going to go around with the particular colours. Then when I want some shading, I'm going to set the machine up to do various widths of zigzags, but still with the feed dogs down so that I can move the, the material as fast or as slow as I want. OK, so let's see that. So back to straight stitch and we'll do the head. And this is going to be tricky. So just a quick recap for what I've done here is drop the feed dogs. Um, I have used a straight stitch uh, just to sew by hand all the way around here a few times and then switched midway to a zigzag. It was the maximum uh, distance in this case. I am using the foot pedal um, so that I've got complete control. I don't have to remove my hands from the material and then did the, the zigzag at the, only, at the speed that I wanted up and down to create that shading effect. Then I'm going to put in another sort of pink, a paler pink there in a zigzag. And because I want these people not to be hollow, I'm going to put in some white zigzags here as well, just to fill them in on the body and the face. This is a practice one. I've done just to, to get my confidence up before I go on to the, the main piece. In an effort to prepare the material, I'm going to do some um, pencil drawing on the back side of the material. So I'm work, going to work on the backing. So the simplest thing to start with is just to draw the edges. So you've already put in your um, little white stitches there. So the simplest thing is to start drawing with a pencil, just so you know the the edges. That's the first step. 
So now I'm going to start with the largest pink person um, so I can do a test run. So I'm going to measure the distance from the bottom to the bottom of the feet and then that distance across and then just put some lines around the outside and the edge. So we'll come back when I've just done that. I have drawn this kind of blocky person which represents this pink person here and it doesn't matter that it's blocky um, because it's going to be done by hand, freestyle, so it's going to be all over the place, it really doesn't matter, it's not going to be that accurate but I need the right perspective going into the back of the, 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 the image. So um, this isn't seen on the front, so you need to, to sew on the front obviously, so how are we going to transfer that to the front? Well my technique is I will get the finest needle that I have, the finest thread that I have and that means a beading needle and some beading thread and I'm going to just sew around the edges so in running stitches really very very finely um, so that I can then see that on the front when I turn it over and sew on the front and those stitches won't be seen and I can remove them without leaving um, holes in the material or very very little holes that won't will not even be noticed at all so that's the way I do that. I have now sewn in the outlines in sort of a block, uh, blocky way, the outlines of the little people and I'm really quite happy with the way they are positioned so I'm happy with that and there's a curious beauty about the white on white there um, and we'll come back in a few minutes or a little while um, when I've done the outlines. So I'm going to do the shadow now which is done with the feed dogs down, a straight stitch and the darning uh, foot. So here goes. So I've completed the people and their shadows and I want it to look like it, it's a sketchbook, you know? So just somebody's gone out their pens or pencils and crayons and, and sketched it out. And I think I'm quite, um, quite happy with the result. I've completed the leaves and there's a blue and two greens in there looks very sparkly and lovely. I've got to put the flowers on so it'll be a mustard and a pink going on there. And um, of course I've been investing more and more time into this and quite concerned that I'll do something wrong and spoil it. So I shall probably, when I come to do the shadow, um, do a test shadow on another piece of material. I have completed the tree and its shadow and I'm feeling quite pleased with that. I've put a, a bit of a mount around uh, the piece to get a flavour for how everything will fit together and I really want to put something here so I've done a couple of test pieces to, to take to see the, um, the colours. I think this more muted colour will do well. And so the final piece is revealed. It's called The Sun Rises in Spite of Everything. It's based on the poem by Derek Mahone called Everything is Going to Be Alright. That piece was made on the Genone 5270 QDC machine and I had great fun testing out different stitches and trying to be creative. Um, it was a long process but it was a major piece of, of work so I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found some, some inspiration of your own from it. The creative process is all about test, experiment, failure, try again um, and at some point you'll come out with something that is hopefully really, really worthwhile. So it's one of my lockdown pieces, um, which I hope you've enjoyed. So 
please stay tuned, subscribe, share and like and um, I'll see you next time.